I absolutely love drawing still life, especially things like mushrooms and onions. The reason why I like particularly drawing mushrooms is because they give such a wide range of textures. There's something quite magical about a mushroom. And look, you've got these different lines inside where they just curl over. Usually you see them as little hats like that. And also they're really good for when you put them in the light. No matter how terrible the light is, you always can get some light and dark shading here. So I'm putting this mushroom down where there's light coming from the left to the right so that you'll see some of these lines and some you'll see some good shadow. Like so. You won't see it at the same angle as me. But I'm going to draw it very simply to show you how to draw a mushroom. So we've got the stem here. And what you want to look is the negative spaces around. So I'm looking at this space here and this space here. There's a little bit of growth coming here. Then you want to look at the lip. You're going to draw this. Oh, don't don't move your still life. The lip here. But not only are you going to draw that, but you want to look at this space around here. So you're looking inside the line and outside the line. So you're looking at this space, that space. And it's just divided into circles and ovals and simplified shapes. And you can put in the details later. But you just want to one make sure you get it on the page. So you've got the edge here. Then you've got shadow here. And also you want to draw in this shadow. The shadow comes just below the lip. So I'm just going to put that in here. Mine will look at a slightly different angle from the way that you're looking at it because this is looking down, the camera's looking down and I'm actually looking across. So what you should do is you should take your own mushroom and actually see the right angle to draw it in and you'll actually understand. I'm doing it. So I've drawn this out with uh, an H or an HB just very lightly and then I'm going to start putting in some shadow before I actually put in the detail. This is a 2B and you can always keep adjusting. What's really interesting about this stalk is that you will see that light is coming from the left to the right but actually the darker shading is down the middle because what happens is, is that light travels around the stalk and this is what happens to tree trunks as well. If you notice that when light hits a tree trunk from the left to the right or either way, you'll always see a sliver of light down here as well because light travels around if it's cylindrical. So always be careful of that. It'll be a little bit darker than that. That'll be the lightest area obviously going darker here because we're going inside the cup 
but this will be the darkest area here and but it will be a bit lighter you can start if you want putting in the little torn edge to the mushroom and then you can start putting in these little lines different little lines that might take you a little while so I'm just going to put in the main ones because what you'll notice is that some of them are darker and thicker than the other ones so you're using broken lines and also what you want is that the light is coming from the left to the right if it helps you you can always put a little arrow with light to remind you and you'll notice that this is lighter so you can start putting in shadow I'm using the side of the pencil there are two ways to use a pencil the point for detail the side for the shading so I've gone from using the point for the lines and for the edging to the side of the pencil I'm still using a 2B it's darker around the edge to the right and then it fades out so you want more pressure here and then fading out as you come around to where the light is and also there's like what you have is reflected light so if you put your mushroom on a piece of white paper you will notice that as this comes out here the light will be reflected on the curve of the cup you can always revert to a point to get more of a harder edge if you need to and then the harder edge comes under here and this is where the shadow comes so you can quickly fill that up with a medium turn don't go too hard shadow is always darker immediately under the object So you want more pressure under the mushroom. And then as you go away, lighter pressure, so it goes lighter and lighter. You can always go back in. And put more in if you so need, but it's easier to build up than to take out, quite frankly. And this is quite light here. So you can see that coming quite nicely. You can start putting in stronger lines when need be. When you squint at this, and don't forget to squint, this is the darkest area. So we can put that in straight away and then you can put, you can still see lines, some are thicker than others, again like the other side, just to give an impression and it's going to be absolutely really dark underneath the lip, <coughs> excuse me. So when you finish doing all that you need to do with the two, you can put in some edging here. We can move on to the 5B. I'm continuing to put some more shadow here around the side. Note that there's greater contrast here, so this is quite sharp, a sharp line, sharp contrast. But 
here where the shadow this is the shadow side going into shadow you don't see that line as much you don't need to put it there it's what's called a lost line so you can use the side of your pencil and there's more shadow here as well the light is here underneath you've got a tiny little bit of shadow underneath here And again, you can use these lines. And then add some more detail to the edges. Notice how the stalk, I'm just gonna put a bit more shadow here actually. The stalk is creating a shadow going over this side. So you've also got that coming over here. There's a little bit more shadow here. So you're building up, building up, building up. You're not just putting it on straight away. And because this is a cylindrical shape, you're putting more pressure on the right and then as you're going across into the middle less and less shadow where it's fading out and you're not going to take away the reflected light here and then when you want you can swap to a 4B don't forget to sharpen your pencils all the times so you have a point so this is a 4B. I did see, say previously 5B, but it is a 4B. You can use 5B if you wish. So this is a darker pencil. It will give even more shadow, more darker tones. And as I said, this, the shadow is always darker right under the object, but you don't want a strong line just one line. So the re way you're going to get rid of that is you've got a line, a strong line here, but as it goes into the shadow, it kind of melts into the shadow. And you can do that by going in a cylindrical motion. So you don't get hard, scratchy lines. Okay, so don't forget that one because that's a really good tip. And also the same for the the surround the edges so you want all the harder lines here and you can put those lines here on the inner side of the cup you can go into this as many details as you want I'm going to be doing a simplified one just for the time because of time limit I just love these uneven sort of shredded edges you can start building up a little bit more can you see how I'm that line here is disappearing I'm still building up this middle tone. I still think it could be a little bit darker. You can do your circular motion here as well. You can use this, you can always swap back to the 2B for a lighter tone because here there's a little tiny bit of shadow on the top. 
which will accentuate where it's cutting them, where it's catching the light. I'm very, very lightly putting that light here, that line, so I'm sorry, I should say, on the, on the left. So now you're adding accents. Of dark and light. I'm just working on the dark at the moment. I'm going to go into this with a, a rubber just to make sure that we've got all the light that we need. Back to the will be. If you see a hard line like that, as I said, circular motions, it'll get rid of it. So just go over, overlap, and less pressure as you go around. Bearing in mind that the light is always going to be changing. So if you want to, ref to take a reference photograph as you're working on it, now would actually be a good time. The last stage is just to add any extra highlights where needed. I'm using one of my favorite things, which is a Derwent uh, pencil eraser. And because you can sharpen it like a pencil, but it'll get point it into points. And so where the light hits, you want to take out those lines because these are lost and found, some people call them lost and found lines, some people call them descriptive lines. What that means is that the lines of an object can get lost in light or shadow. So for example, you have got, do you see that line coming down here? That's getting lost in the shadow here. In the same way, I want to actually show the viewer where the light is coming from. Now I've got a dark background I will show you in the reference photograph but I'm actually taking that light out if you think you've done any too much shadow you can just soften that or you might have gone over it with your hand so you can just clean that up a little bit light is hitting here so I'm actually taking away the edge of that mushroom here but there's still some shading some medium tones line coming up here but very 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 softly I'm actually quite pleased with the reflected light here and please note that the shadow here is darker as we did with our circular motion but it's very soft you do not want a hard line for your shadow, neither do you want a, um, a very hard, uh, a hard line in both ways. So you don't want to take the shadow right up to the edge, very, very dark. You want to have different tones, so it's darker underneath going to medium tones. Also, you don't want a hard line or one, I've had students just draw a line around and that looks makes it look uh, cut out so don't do that I think I need a little bit more shading that looks a little bit needs a little bit more shading here but I think that's about it so I hope that you enjoyed a simple drawing of a mushroom but never dismiss still life as a drawing exercise and what nature the beauty of nature because just one single mushroom can actually produce a really magical drawing and also a very good exercise to practice your tonal exercise light and the heavy pressure different pencils and descriptive lines and different textures. So I hope you enjoyed. Any questions, 
um, please put them underneath or if you want to make any comments I look forward to hearing from you